Hello, I'm Rex Basterfield, and I'd like to welcome you to a video about my Qualcomm SIM Geel. The Geel is an African instrument, as you can see from the image. It's a wooden xylophone which uses dry gourds to act as resonating chambers for the bars or keys. The special thing about the uh, the Geel is the holes that are made in the gourd which are covered by membranes to add a, a typical sort of buzzing sound to the timbre. An African xylophone which doesn't have these membranes is called a balaphone. So now I'll dive right in and run through the controls with some sound demonstrations as I go along. So I'll kick off by talking about the controls for membranes. The size control simulates various uh, changes of the size and tension of the membranes. Due to a lack of precision engineering of these membranes and the gourds, which are after all a natural product, uh, the sound between individual notes from the membranes can be um, quite different. So here we can set up a variation. So I'll just turn this to maximum first of all. And if I turn it down to minimum, the membranes all sound the same. Obviously we can set the level with this knob. If we had the microphone close to the membranes, the volume of the membrane would be louder. And if we turn it down to minimum, then we have no membranes and the instrument becomes a balafon. Now we'll go on to the, uh, the bar sound itself. Um, actually, own a balafon, a diatonic tuned balafon, and when the length of the sound, you could call that the decay, although it does a few other things as well, is set to one, then the decay time is the same as on my own instrument. Now, as you would probably um, expect, the lower notes have a longer decay than the higher notes. So I'll go from the lowest C and three octaves up and you'll hear the difference. The beaters uh, knob controls the hardness of the end of the mallet beta, stick, um, whatever you want to call it, and at low level it simulates uh, a softish rubber mallet, and then I'll um, turn up the hardness. I found with my own instrument that if I used um, a hard beater, not only does the sound get sharper, but the envelope decay gets faster. And I think that's because a hard beater produces more high frequency and uh, that decays dissipates faster. But that is simulated too. Although the sound bars are suspended on ropes with the gold attached to them, a certain amount of noise from the frame itself will break through when you hit a key and so this is simulated with the frame controls so if I alter the level of the sound you'll hear the sound of the frame being added and we can also alter the quality of the timbre of the, the frame which would relate to its size or materials of construction.
Now the instrument produces a, uh, a stereo field um, with the low notes on the left and the high notes on the right and the width control sets the width. So if I turn that down to zero, it's mono, it all comes from the centre. And if I turn it up, it becomes progressively more wider until we have a full stereo image. And we can go beyond that up to a pseudo wide effect. So the last thing to talk about is the pitch section here and the octave, semi and fine are just the tuning of the whole instrument. But being made out of wood, these instruments are subject to changes in temperature and humidity which affect the tuning of individual keys. So you rarely get one that's perfectly in tune across the whole span, uh, certainly not as good as the day it was made. So the bad knob determines the amount of detuning between individual keys. So set halfway, it sounds like this. Not too bad unless I play an octave. And then you can hear some detuning. The macro behind the bad knob not only sets the amount of detuning, it also selects from over a thousand different pseudo-random uh, arrangements as to which keys are sharp and which are flat. So what's this end octave thing then? Well, players sometimes strike the bars on their ends using the shaft of the beta and that gives a, a much sharper sound with no membrane added in. This, is, um, this allows accenting and um, more interest in the rhythm. So if we click on the question marks here, there's a, a reminder that from the key B2, which is 47 down, the end hit is simulated and the end hit because we're using a um, lower octave can be transposed up by one, two, three or four octaves. So if I play a middle G and the low G on my five octave keyboard, you get the idea, hopefully. The last thing I want to talk about is the effects. There's a, a reverb effect and this is new for me. I decided to have a go at a room simulator. So I'll turn the reverb off and I'll turn the room simulator on and off. So that's my Qualcomm SimGeal for you. And of course there's more detailed information in the included user guide and if you're interested in the instrument itself if you have a look in the background info folder you'll find links and pdfs with uh, much more information so i'm going to play you out with a little bit of um, african music which also features the end hit thing i was talking about so have fun and until the next time Bye.